In this video, I'm going to make logical gates in ShapeD2. Don't get me wrong, there are already a bunch of them in the game, but I'm not going to use any of them. Instead, I will make logical gates with only bells and machines while using the shapes as a signal. I will call this the bells logic. This will showcase the game's potential in full automation even without wires and stuff. Let's begin with the OR gate. It's arguably the most simple one, with just a junction between two bells. When at least one of them has shapes coming in, it also outputs shapes. The AND gate is also simple with just a swapper. This swapper only works when both of the inputs are loaded, otherwise it stops working and we get no signal output. The AND and OR gates by themselves don't make a functional complete set of logical gates. We still need the NOT gate. Here comes the tricky part. First, the NOT gate needs to output shapes when there is no input, meaning that it needs an additional power input to supply the shapes. From now on, the power supply of the gates will always be the topmost input, while the lower one or two inputs are signal. We just let the shapes from the power belt through when there is no signal. But the bigger question is, how do we stop the output when there are also shapes coming in from the signal belts? Solution lies in two properties of the swapper. First, if the two inputs of swapper are the same, then it does no function than letting those shapes through. Only if two inputs are different, it will produce new shapes. Second, the swapper stops working when only one side is inputting and the other side is empty. In the NOT gate, I turn the shapes from the signal input 180 degrees and merge them with the original shapes from the power input. This forms the alternating sequence of shapes. When I spit a bell again, the two different shapes will be separated to the two bells leading to the swapper. Because they are different, they will be combined into one diagonal shape, leaving the second output empty. This will in turn block the swapper that follows, and thus I have no output when the signal is on. When I stop the signal input, the only shape that comes in is from the power input, and the same shape will be split into both belts, passing through the swappers unaltered, and be recombined at the output. Therefore, we have a working NOT gate. Note that I added trash cans to prevent clogging of the belts. The NOR gate is just replacing the single input of NOT gate with the NOR gate. It only outputs shapes when both inputs are off. Similarly, we have the NAND gate from an AND gate plus a NOT gate. It stops output shapes when both inputs are on. Although we can make the XOR gate with connecting a bunch of NAND gates, there's a simpler solution in game. The core part is again the NOT gate, but the power input of the NOT gate is turned into a second signal input. This ensures that the XOR gate will output shapes when the inputs are different from each other. But this time, either of the signals can be on, and you have either the original or the reverse shape coming out. The cutter and the following rotator restore whatever it receives to the original shape. At last, the swapper replenishes the output to a half belt with shapes from the power input. Lastly, we have a buffer that really doesn't do anything than doubling the signal strength. If the input is on, it also outputs shapes, but even if the input is at half belt throughput, it outputs a full belt. If the input is off, it stops. This will be useful when we want to split signals in actual circuits. These logical gates are easy to read in this horizontal form, but for larger circuits, it's more convenient to have the inputs all from a different side. Here I remade the gates so that signals always come from north and south, power from west, and output to the east side. For simplicity's sake, I made all of them power themselves with this sandbox item producer, and I standardized all of them to output a half belt, while accepting inputs with either full or half belts. Now let's use them to build some actual circuits. Here is a classical showcase of logical circuits, a full adder. It has two single bit numbers and a carrier bit, while outputting a binary number with two bits. This circuit can be accurately represented by this diagram. With all three bits on, it outputs 1 1, which translates to 3. 
with only one input and the output 0, 1, which is 1. And with two inputs active, the output is 1, 0, which is 2. How about bigger circuits? Like this 4-bit adder or this 2-bit multiplier? How about this? A half-byte multiplier that accepts two 4-bit inputs and multiplies them to an 8-bit number. Let's try it out. Let me input 15 and 13 and speed up the game with F9, for which you need to activate the cheat mode by pressing F1, enter the console and input this command. Attention, entering cheat mode will permanently flag your save file, so always back it up first. 15 times 13 would be 195. That should correspond to 11000011 in binary. And there we are. Thank you for watching this video. The link for the blueprints is in the description. I'm looking forward to more applications of Belt Logic in Shape Z2.